Hello, boys and girls. We're going to get ready to listen to another folk tale, which we know is a story that's been passed on from person to person. And finally, someone wrote it down for all to enjoy, which is awesome. Now, the last three stories all were very similar. Now, we're going to get ready to listen to a new group of stories that all have similar things. Now, they're not exactly the same stories, but they're all very similar. So, we're going today to listen to a story called Tom Thumb. This story comes from England, which we have actually heard quite a bit about because that's where we read about Beth and Nat when they went to the UK. So like always, we have a few words that I'd love for us to take a look at before we get started. <clears throat> so our first word is avoid. It means to prevent something from happening. Like, I like to avoid missing the bus. Clever means very smart. Commotion, noisy and confusion. And we know a folk tale is a word we've used often when we talk about a story being told over and over and only recently written down. Scampered, or to run and move quickly. All right, well, let's sit back and get ready to listen to our story about Tom Thumb. Once there was a farmer who used to sit and poke at the fire in the evening while his wife sat at her spinning wheel. The farmer would sigh and say, oh, how sad it is that we have no children. Our house is so quiet while other people's houses are so noisy and cheerful. Yes, said the wife, if only we had a child. Well, a year later, the woman gave birth to a little boy. He was strong and healthy, but no bigger than a thumb. His parents named him Tom Thumb. As Tom grew up, he proved to be very clever and smart and intelligent. One day when his father was going out to cut wood, he said, I wish there was someone who, oh, as his father was going out, he said, I wish there was someone who could bring the cart later. I'll do it, said Tom. But Tom, said his father, how can you? You're too small to hold the reins. Never mind, said Tom. Have mother harness the horse, then I'll sit in the horse's ear and tell him which way to go. And so Tom's mother harnessed the horse and put Tom in the horse's ear. Tom called out, giddy up, and the horse started walking. Now it happened that as the horse and cart turned a corner, a strange man was walking by and heard Tom calling out directions to the horse. Look, he said to himself, there goes a wagon and the driver is calling to a horse, but the driver is nowhere to be seen. So the man followed the horse and the wagon to the place where Tom's father was chopping wood. When Tom spotted his father, he cried out, whoa, boy. Then he said, look, father, here I am. His father lifted his son down from the horse and set him on a stump. When the stranger saw this, he thought, look here, that little fella could be useful. I should take him to town and have him do a few jobs for me. He went to Tom's father and said, see here, old man, how about letting that little man go to town with me? I'll take good care of him and even give you money for your trouble. No, Tom's father said, he's the apple of my eye and I would be too sad to see him go. Tom crept up onto his father's shoulder and whispered, go ahead, father, let me go. I'll be back in no time. But Tom, his father began, trust me, Tom broke in, I'll take care of everything. So Tom's father let him go with the man. Off Tom went riding on the brim of the man's hat. That night after traveling for several hours, the man came to a barn that was located next to a quiet house. He decided that the barn would be a good place to sleep and rest up for the travels the next day. When he was all settled in for the night, the man took off his hat. At that moment, Tom scampered away and slipped into a mouse hole, crying out, So long, good fellow. Have a good trip without me. The man got down on his hands and knees and poked sticks into the holes, but he could not find Tom. 
Eventually, he gave up. When the man left, Tom came out of his hole. He had found an empty snail shell and said, oh, this looks like a safe place to spend the night. But just as he lay down, he heard the voices of two robbers whispering. Yes, said one of the robbers. This is the house. The mayor will be back till tomorrow. So now is the time to rob his house. But how can we do it? Although the mayor's away, the cook and maid are still there. So we'll have to be quiet to avoid waking them. Tom knew he had to do something to stop the robbers. So he sprang out of his shell and shouted, I have an idea. Who is that? Whispered one of the frightened robbers. Take me with you and I'll help you, said Tom. Who's talking? Where are you? Asked the robber. Down here, cried Tom. The robbers looked down and there they saw Tom waving to them. One robber lifted him up and said, what's this little one? How are you going to help us rob the mayor? It'll be easy, said Tom. The mayor keeps his money behind iron bars, right? I can slip between the bars and hand the money out to you. Well, hee haw, that's a fine idea, little one, said the robbers and they all snickered all the way to the mayor's house. Then they fell quiet and whispered to Tom, speak softly here, don't wanna get caught. Of course, said Tom. He snuck into the mayor's house and slipped between the bars where the money was kept. Then he called out to the robbers in his loudest voice, how much did you want me to steal? Did you want it all? Shh hissed the robbers. Be quiet. You'll wake the cook and the maid. We can hear just fine. Just hand us the money. But Tom pretended he could not hear them and once again shouted, what's that you say? You want to take all the money? I'll give you everything. Just hold out your hands. Well, all the commotion woke the cook and the maid. They came running to see what all the noise was about. And when they burst in, the robbers ran away. Tom slipped away to the barn. All the excitement had made him sleepy. So he went to sleep in a big pile of hay. The next morning, the milkmaid came to the barn and pitched a large bundle of hay with Tom still sleeping in it. The cow ate up the hay. Poor Tom slid right down into the cow's stomach. Goodness me, said Tom sleepily. Someone forgot to put windows in this house. But suddenly, splish, something wet and heavy fell on Tom's head. It was a mouthful of hay. The cow was eating again and more wick, wet, sticky hay fell on Tom. He called out, that's enough. No more hay. I'm quite full. Thank you. The milkmaid was milking the cow then and she heard the voice coming out of the cow. She fell off of her milk stool. When the milkmaid fell off of her milk stool, she startled the cow who sneezed a big sneeze. Ah, choo! The sneeze caused Tom to come flying out. Yuck! Tom landed onto a garbage heap where the milkmaid's family had thrown the remains of their dinner. Tom struggled to get up surrounded by meat and vegetables. He just managed to stand up when, zing, a hungry wolf had snatched up a piece of meat that Tom was caught on and ran off with it. As the wolf ran, Tom bounced along and thought, this is an odd place to be. Then he said to the wolf, Mr. Wolf, wouldn't you rather eat some delicious treats instead of this old piece of meat? I can show you where to find such treats. Where might that be? Growled the wolf. In a house I know it's full of lots of delicious fresh food. So Tom led the wolf back to his mother and father's house. When they got there, the wolf ate until he was stuffed. Then Tom called out, help, help, there's a wolf in the house. Tom's father came running with a big stick. He chased the wolf with the stick and sent him howling to the woods. Good work, father, said Tom. Father looked down and cried out, Tom, where have you been? We've been worried about you. 
Well, Father, I've been too many places to count, and I think that from now on, I'd rather stay with you. Oh, my dear boy, said his father, I never should have let you go, and I never will again. The end.